Hello guys and welcome to another flight model analysis. Today I will be reviewing the F4U 1D and 1C Corsairs. And as usual, instead of wasting your time with uh, formalities, uh, let's get right into the nitty gritty. Alright, so first uh, thing we're going to look at is the top speeds of the F4U 1D at every 5,000 feet in comparison to this document. And the first altitude, sea level, the F4U 1D is around 341 miles per hour without WEP. Uh, at 5,000 feet, the Corsair is 358 miles per hour. And mind you, these first tests all up to 30,000 feet are all without WEP. These are all in military power. And uh, you can see at 10,000 feet, it's the same speed as 5,000 feet. And at 15,000 feet, it goes around 379 miles per hour. At 20,000 feet, we're at 403 miles per hour. At 23,900 feet, which was the critical altitude of the F4U-1D in that document, uh, the plane goes 396 miles per hour. And at 30,000 feet, the Corsair goes 375 miles per hour. And now I'm going to do all the same tests, but just at combat power, aka with WEP. And uh, you can see at sea level the Corsair is about one, about 370 miles per hour. At 5,000 feet the Corsair goes 371 miles per hour. At 10,000 feet the Corsair is clocked in around 384 miles per hour. At 15,000 feet it's at 400 miles per hour. At the critical altitude with WEP, which is around 9,900 feet, uh, the Corsair goes. 427 miles per hour. At around 25,000 feet, the Corsair is around 416 miles per hour. And at 30,000 feet, the Corsair goes around 398 miles per hour. And the final top speed test, this is the data for the F4U1C. And here you can see that the Corsair 1C at sea level is getting around 369 miles per hour. And at the plane's critical altitude, it gets around 430 miles per hour. And here are my results with the side-by-side -side comparison to the real-world military power performance of the airplane. And here's the same thing, just at combat power instead of military power. And if you're a fan of the graphs, there's your side-by-side in-game and real-world performance with military power and with WEP. And here's the side-by-side in-game versus real-world top speed performance of the F4U1C at combat power. So, to sum up, I'd say that the Corsair 1C and 1D are both pretty significantly overperforming when it comes to top speed. Uh, at their peak altitudes, they're both about 20 miles per hour too fast. And the Corsair 1D on military power, it's slightly overperforming at certain altitudes, but it's not too far off at most altitudes. And now, similar to the top speed test, I'm going to do two pairs of climbs, one at combat power and one at military power and both are up to 20,000 feet and I'm going to compare the climb rate and the time to climb. And as usual I'm not going to force you to sit through a bunch of several minute climbs and I'm going to skip straight to the results and as you can see here this graph is representing the real world and in-game climb performance on both military and combat power. And by the graph you can see for the majority of the time during the military power test the F4U1D was underperforming in climb rate but with WEP it actually starts to overperform. And this is just a second graph of the same thing for all you metrics people. And here's the times I got for the time to climb up to 10,000 and 20,000 feet on military and combat power for the F4U1D. And after the 1D test I tested out the 1C on combat power for its climb performance. And there you go, the climb performance for the 1C is pretty much exactly the same as the 1D. And uh, both of the aircraft, the 1C and the 1D, are both overperforming up to 20,000 feet on WEP. But as you saw earlier, the Corsair 1D on military power is underperforming up to 20,000 feet by about 40 seconds. And there is data on the Corsair's roll performance, so I'm going to actually measure that. I'm going to perform a roll at 170 miles per hour indicated. 280 miles per hour and then another one at 300 miles per hour and measure the results and compare them to the real world data 
And that's what we can see here, and if you look at the, the numbers, you can see that the Corsair is close to accurate at around 280 miles per hour, and the roll rate does decay past that like it should. However, I do feel like the Corsair loses a little bit too much maneuverability at low speeds like 170 miles per hour. And onto these stall speed tests, you can see these uh, numbers here are taken from an actual Corsair flight manual. And you can see me here trying to figure out the exact stall speed in game, which seems to be around 105 miles per hour. And with the undercarriage up and flaps up, that's about 10 miles per hour too early. Or it's, the speed is a little bit too high for the stall speed. And I got similar results for with the undercarriage down, 94 miles per hour. That's again more or less about 10 miles per hour higher than it should be. And with regards to the flat turn stall test, the F4U1D responded as it should. I was able to exceed the angle of attack and I stalled my airplane. And similarly, the F4U1D responded as it should on the powerless loop test. I go into an unpowered climb, keep the elevator fully pulled, the spinning gets worse. So it seems to check out in all regards in regarding stalling. However, the F4U1C does not stall properly. In level flight, I cannot get the airplane to stall. It acts kind of similar to uh, one of the early Yaks, where you can just keep the elevator fully pulled and just keep flying in level flight. Your airplane will never dip a wing or stall. It'll just keep flying and losing altitude slowly. And also, regarding the flat turn stall test, the airplane was unable to exceed the angle of attack, and it just could not, I could not get it to stall in a flat turn. And just to wrap up, I have a few additional points to make, and the first of which has to do with WEP. And the way WEP works in the Corsair 1C and 1D is it's supplied by water injection, and there's a limited supply of water for that water injection. And as you can see here, while the recommended amount of WEP is only 5 minutes, the actual supply itself of water for water injection is closer to 8.5 minutes. So this would mean that once you use WEP for about 8.5 minutes, you should run out of water completely for water injection and not be able to use WEP anymore. However, in game it works a little bit different than that. Uh, instead of running out of water, you can just use WEP permanently. The only variable factor being overheating your engine. And I actually tested it in game to see how far I could take it, and after about 40 minutes of constantly using WEP, I just gave up. The next short point I wanted to make was about the red line dive speed, or the speed at which the aircraft was not designed to go past. And in real life, it was around 470 miles per hour. It wasn't recommended to ever go past this because if you did, the aircraft would start to experience severe vibrations and buffeting. And you see a similar thing happen in game whenever you exceed that red line speed. However, in game, the red line speed for the Corsair is around 547 miles per hour. This is about 75 miles per hour over the maximum dive speed listed in the aircraft's manual. On top of this, the Corsair 1C and 1D both do not have any elevator stiffening model, and they can pull extremely unrealistically high G turns at high speeds. However, at the very least, the aircraft does have aileron stiffening model, and uh, it's quite a realistic amount if I do say so myself. And lastly, just a minor detail here, but in game the Corsair has 2,350 rounds of 50 cal ammo, and in real life it had 2,400. Even Gaijin's own data sheet states that the Corsair 1D should have 2,400 rounds of 50 cal ammunition. And while this isn't a huge deal, it's still an inaccuracy and it should be fixed. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to say, so... That should be it. Uh, I'll try to get my blog post updated with the F4U1C and 1D as soon as possible. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video.